Okay, so this is about seven charities that Gordon is considering donating money to, and these seven charities have all been rated, and the rating is in terms of these asterisks, these stars that are given by a certain website, and the rating has been done on two parameters: finances and accountability. Now we have these, as you can see, if you talk about one charity, Civica, then the category in which that charity functions, and then the rating that that charity got in these two parameters. This is how the information is organized. Now, one very important thing here is that greater the number of asterisks, the higher the ratings are. So we have to know that when you see three stars and when you see two stars, three stars is better. So with this understanding, let's read further. Now we'll read how Gordon will really use these ratings to decide. So Gordon will not donate to a charity unless something happens. So what does this mean? I will not donate unless you do this, which means I will donate only if. the following condition is satisfied and this is the condition let's read it so i will donate only if for both finances and accountability so for both the parameters it which is the charity is at least as highly rated as any other charity in the same category which means the charity that you are really you know looking at at any point in time you will donate to it only if its rank is at least as high as any other charity's rank in the same category which means you should not be less than all the others there should be at least one other you know let me write it this way at least one other should be there that you either equal or you have a better rank than if on the flip side you are less in terms of your ranking than all others then you will not be donated to this is the condition now this in simpler words means that if you have the least ranking in your category if you have the least finances ranking or the accountability ranking in your category then you will not be donated to that's it this is the simplest thing we will take forward now further when we see it is not the only thing they're saying gordon may have other criteria that would prevent him from donating so even if this one condition that we talked about is satisfied there still may be other things we have to keep that in mind all right now since we understand everything that's given let's just read what is asked it says for each of the following statements and here here you have your three statements for each of them select indicates statement is correct which is this first choice here select this one if the information provided all of this information on top indicates that the statement is correct well it's exactly the same wording so it'll use all of this information to evaluate each statement one by one and if based on the information a statement is true then i will select indicate statement is correct but if i find that either it's false you know or it's something that i can't say anything about in that case i will mark does not indicate statement is correct so let's just start discussing this with the first statement If you found the analysis of this data set helpful then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it and to stay tuned with such content hit the subscribe button below Now to take your learning to the next level we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus edition For example you can build your CR pre-thinking skills you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus edition and a lot of other content the link for this is in the description now let's get back to the question at hand now based on this information we have to see which out of these three statements is accurate or which of these statements is indicated use from the information that we've read so first statement says gordon will donate to at least one charity Now at this point should I really start finding which charity is it that satisfies my condition that is not rejected because of the condition no I know there is this other criteria that may be there because of which Gordon will simply reject the charity so what is the point in thinking about the one condition that we do know we cannot be sure that he will donate to at least one of these charities so we mark does not indicate for this one and move on statement 2 says Gordon will donate to at most one of these charities this is now less than equal to one which means either to no charity at all or to one so this time it's putting an upper limit on how much how many charities gordon 
student can donate to. Understand the difference with the previous statement where I had at least one. There it was trying to give a guarantee that yeah, he is definitely donating to some charity. But that is where the other criteria came into place. It's like, no, I don't know. He might have other things which will reject every charity. But this time I am putting an upper limit that it's not possible that he donates to more than one charity. Now, this very well is possible if I have more you know, charities that satisfy his condition. So let's just understand this a little. See, I evaluate the table and I count the number of charities that actually do satisfy his condition, only talking about his condition. If I find no such charity or if I find only one such charity, then in this case, even if the other criteria is satisfied, my total number of charities that he will donate to will definitely be less than equal to one. So in this case, it will be indicated true based on the information. Now, suppose the number of these charities that satisfy the condition, it's instead say two or three or four or something like that. In this case, it is possible that these also satisfy the other criteria. It's a possibility at least. And if that happens, then the total number of charities donated to will also be greater than or equal to two, right? And in this case, my statement will not be indicated true based on the given information. So I really have to go into the table to try to find the actual number of charities that do satisfy his condition this time to see the possibility of the number of charities he can donate to. Again, very important to understand the difference between the two, why it was unnecessary in the first statement and required here. So let's go into the table now. Again, the ranking has to be seen category wise, remember. So if suppose I want to get all of the charities from a single category together, I'll just sort by the category column. And here I have the first two that are both in community. So what do I know again? The charity that has the least rank less than all others, this will be rejected. That's the simple thing I'm taking. So if I look at these two in the uh, community category, then in finances ranking, I can see three stars is lower than four stars, which is given in the in the text here that the greater the number of stars you have the higher the ratings are so that's important to understand now here because of this civica is out of the race next when i look at together we will then for that maybe i will look at the accountability criteria so when you look at these two rankings from accountability together we will have the least rank which means even this is rejected and that means no charity from the community category will be selected next you look at your environment category Again, just see the least rank in finances is this one. So nature's friends is out in accountability. Least rank is this one. So eco society is out, which means the only environment category that can be donated to is green world. Then finally, I look at the last one, which is health. Again, see where do you have the least ranking? So two stars and three solutions is out. And then when you see these two, these are equal. So that doesn't help me reject anything. And so only healthy hearts is possible here, which means this one condition is satisfied by two charities. That means if you keep in mind the other criteria also, either he'll donate to both of these or just one of these because one gets rejected due to the other criteria or to none because both get rejected. So it's two or less, not one or less according to the statement here. It said at most one. So that is false. I can't be sure about that. So it does not indicate again. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the table analysis modules in the GITA course, we teach you how to get comfortable with the table so that you can process it in the most efficient way. We serve more than 65 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you learn various aspects of the table analysis questions, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. Third and the final statement, Gordon will not donate to a charity in community. Oh, that is something we had already seen. Both of the community categories got rejected. And so this statement is true. And we mark this and we're done.